It's a windy day today, very gray. So maybe that kept people at home. And of course, it's Friday, so they need to finish their chores. Um, but we went off this morning to drop Sierra at the bus, and we saw Chris just outside Water Lilies preparing for the day as he swept the road. And we had a conversation having a, a talk about solutions for climate change. And uh, Chris said something very perceptive, which, of course, um, we all are familiar with. If it's not profitable, it's not going to work, which, of course, is not the approach we've been taking. Uh, and we can talk about how to do things differently. Um, despite the quiet morning, I thought we'd spend 10 minutes testing our live stream, but also go through some of the ideas that I had hoped we might discuss. So the first thing to reflect upon, just to help us get into the frame of mind, is to ask about people. Are we good or bad? Not you yourself, but us as humanity, as humans. Do you believe that, generally speaking, people are good or bad? Are they compassionate or selfish? So have a little reflection on that and see what you think as we come in to play this game. The first thing to understand is what is going on. And so that's a question that you have to ask yourself if you're going to move forward, because you can look around and you can say, something's not right. What is going on? That's why people have climate anxiety, because they don't understand what's going on. So we have to address that question for ourselves. And that is a process of raising awareness. And if we go and look at the data, the resources, to answer that question, what we're going to find out is that human beings have impacted this planet in a very profound way. Um, we produced a little visual uh, artistic um, work to help people see that called Feast Upon the Earth. It's a timescape of existence. And when we look through that from the beginning, 13.8 billion years ago to now, we can see the rapid acceleration of the complexity of life on this planet and also appreciate that we are connected to everything and that this is a very unique experience. The other thing that comes out from that timescape is reflecting on what's been going on in the last 100, 150 years, because that's when the greatest changes have been wrought on the face of the earth. And many people look around and see the wealth and luxuries that we enjoy, the buildings, the warmth, the cars, the funds, the TVs, and so on, and think that everything is wonderful. But when you look at the big picture, when you take everybody into account, it becomes apparent that things are not quite as wonderful, because half of us are not sustained. We don't have housing, we don't have food, we don't have transport. We might have a mobile phone, because apparently 4.75 billion people are connected to social media, so that means 5 billion people have mobile phones. Or at least they have use of mobile phones. So when we look back over that period, what we can see is in the last 100 years or so, um, the acceleration in many different areas of human activity. Um, and this is particularly relevant in the consumption of energy. But we see it across the spectrum in terms of um, uh, transport, technology development, um, rate of movement, and so on. But what all of this is doing is it is consuming, extracting from nature. And now we're facing into the reality of the consequences of that behavior, that extractive mindset, which is a disruption in the biosphere to which we're connected. So we then have to say, OK, we see a bit of a problem. We can understand what's going on a little bit. Now let's try and understand the context in which it's going on. How does the world work? How does the universe work? 
And how do we work as a part of that? So if we can step back from our own lives and reflect on those ideas, what we want to do is we want to look for consistency between people, consistency between humans and other life forms, consistency between the behavior of life on Earth and the universal cosmic dynamics that happen on a cosmic level, planetary. And when you do that, you start to see patterns of behavior which keep repeating. And one of the ideas you might see is the emergence of consciousness, the emergence of thinking over time, the emergence of awareness, the emergence of values, good and bad. That was the question we asked at the beginning. Um, and we will start to see the emergence of what you might call morality, the good and the bad perception. And if we step back, what we see is that what makes humans interesting is that we, among a few other life forms, exhibit decision-making, choice, free will at a certain level, and we can actually choose to sacrifice our own well-being for the benefit of other people, other life forms, or even for the planet. It's not that it's particular to humans. We can see it in other species as well. Bees are a very good example because they act as a colony. A solitary uh, honeybee, in particular, will, will not survive. Um, it must work with all of the others. And they will sacrifice themselves for the good of the colony. So this emergence of consciousness is something which is happening quite quickly now, as we connect more quickly because of technology, because of awareness, because of the wealth of understanding which has gone before us. And we can start to see a big picture pattern happening. And then we can start to change behavior. Because it's only behavior change at a very personal level that is going to manifest change in what's going on in our society. Um, so what we've come up with is a little routine which can uh, help people change their mind become aware of what's going on through inquiry, and let go of the traditional mindsets which give us all security. We're now talking from Chok Breed, which is, um, used to be uh, a central point for the Brigidine order. But now those kinds of regulatory mindsets have been allowed to progress, and it has become a very central point to the community here, where people come in to talk to each other, to gather, to share, and to feel a sense of belonging and community, which is very welcome. And they're changing from a pyramid of control, which is what many of the political and other type of institutions have grown up with over the past centuries, to a more community-based, flat-label sharing idea, which is how nature works. In nature, there are no leaders. Nature is our teacher if we want to be connected again to the world. And when we look outside and we look at the field of grass, we don't see a few bits of grass sticking up 25 times higher than all the other blades of grass. The grass is all the same. Now, when you go up close and you look at the blades of grass, each bit of grass is different up close. But as a group, they're all the same reminiscent perhaps of humans. We all look kind of the same from a distance. When you get up close, we're all a little bit different. At the end of the day, we all work to the same rules. And so what we need to do is change our mindset from one where we're following a leader to one where we're making our own choices and accepting the consequences of them. And that's a level of freedom. And to remember that independence does not necessarily give one freedom, whereas freedom can be found by having dependence or at least interdependence on other people. 
If, there is, if we don't share tasks, then we all have to do everything. If I am an independent operator, I must grow my food, build my house, make my car, and do everything on my own. And that's not going to be a very lovely life for me, and I will have no freedoms of choice. Whereas if I share my life with a number of people, there will be gaps in the day when I can choose to do this or to do that or to do the other thing or to sit in the sun. So what we're looking at now is a very complex, interconnected and uncertain future. And a lot of people find this to be stressful. There's this idea called climate anxiety or change anxiety. Um, and part of it is because nowadays being good can become bad. Because if you pursue the traditional objectives of our society to gain power and wealth, those activities, you suddenly realize, inflicted a cost on other people and on the planet. And so you find that success starts to become a bad thing morally. So following other people doesn't really work. We have to make our own choices. What I would say is that the world is a beautiful place and people are wonderful because what makes us human is that love and altruism. So the opportunity is certainly there and presented to us. What I would say is that we don't have to change the world very much to keep what we have and adapt to a new dynamic, which is much closer to the way nature works and to work with nature instead of on nature, to cultivate nature instead of extract and consume nature, which is what we have been doing. Um, and so I see the future as being possibly very wonderful, even for humans, that we don't have to extinguish ourselves. Um, the answers are there. What one can do on a personal level is there are some fundamental changes one can make. And those are reason-based, science-based. Uh, and that would be uh, changing your diet to move away from animal agriculture, which is known to be extremely destructive. 96%, uh, I believe it is, around 95% of the um, mammals on this planet are humans. And our food, there's only 4% of wild mammals on the planet, which is a shocking statistic. And that is because we have taken away all the vegetation, the trees and the forests to put on cows and sheep and pig and chickens for us to eat. But it has changed the dynamic of the climate, the biosphere. So... Changing, moving away from animal agriculture and consuming animals is one huge impact that an individual can make. And the other, of course, is flying. Stop flying. Don't fly. So those are two very large changes which can have an immediate and huge impact. So if you do either of those two things, you can feel good about yourself. There are a number of small things that one can do. The most important thing is to be aware of one's behavior. Now, in the grander scheme of things, we need system change, because only system change is going to help us adapt to this changing climate, the um, disruption of the biosphere, the uh, consequent risks of um, access to food, access to clean water, access to the simple resources of energy, and so on, and, and, and health remedies and therapies. Those sorts of things have to change from a, an acquisitive, extractive, dominant mindset to the one that we all advocate in a place like this, one of love and sharing. But that does mean, of course, that we have to give up what we love. And that is a great challenge for us to face as people, to come to terms with the idea living in Western economies, that we have more than enough. But as George Monbiot says, we can certainly have 
um, private sufficiency for everybody. Everybody can have a comfortable roof over their head and enough food in their tummy. That's not an issue if we can just address those problems sensibly. But we can also have public luxuries. We can also share in access to the good food, the variety of foods. We can have public luxuries such as sports facilities, libraries, educational facilities, not educate, good education for some and modest or no education for others. We can change the pedagogy. We can change curricula so that people understand the world we live in from a young age instead of being taught fairly mm, distracting concepts which remove us from the reality of nature. So I think the future can be very bright and we can choose a future. Now, the other idea that has bothered us is how to get the answers across simply. And so we've come up with a little ditty, free think flow. Because we think that if we think, if people breathe, think, flow, everybody will find a comfortable path forward. But breathing is important to help us think. Most of us don't understand about breathing. We don't breathe properly. We do shallow, short breaths, which is what we do when we're scared, because most of us are a little bit scared. Now, when we can recognize that behavior and adapt to try and slow down our breathing, extend our breaths, breathe from the bottom, of our uh, abdomen, it changes the way the blood flows in our body. It changes our heart rate. It means that we're activating the prefrontal cortex, which is our thinking part of the brain, instead of the instinctive reptilian brain at the back, which is activated when we do short breathing. So if we practice our breathing, we can use our mind. Our mind, of course, which is not just our brain. It is that whole chemical, electrochemical system in our body, parts of the brain, part of the spinal column, part of the hormones, and so on. That's our mind. Um, so we can use that to reflect on what we see and ask critical questions and think outside of the box, because we have calmed ourselves to think of things which are very different from what we are experiencing today. So when we breathe, we think, and when we can think and use this capacity, which is what all humans have, creativity, ingenuity, the ability to step out of ourselves and envision things that don't exist, we can then make much more profound choices for ourselves. And we can flow with the universal dynamic. We can flow with the cosmic rhythm. We can make choices which feel right and help everybody. So breathing flow is a way to help you be who you are and enjoy this beautiful world. So I think without a large audience in the room, which we were rather expecting, we can still make great strides forward to have solutions, not just for climate change, but for system change, we can have a rosy future if we can become aware of what's going on through our own inquiries, to let go, which is very difficult, let go of our traditional mindsets and our stuff, which we hoard, and we can embrace one another, reconnect with nature, reconnect with ourselves, have confidence in ourselves, respect ourselves, and move forward. And it's not about being individuals and individualistic. It's about knowing that we are here and we are fine, and then just letting that be as we move forward to collaborate, communicate, organize, and serve one another and the world, and thereby enjoy life. Thank you.